Where am I going to? For my understanding. Matthew. Sister Douglas? Yes. Did you read it? No. What are you doing here? I thought you were going to be gone for a little while. It's a plastic fork. It's a plastic fork. It only hurts so much. Huh? It's not like I haven't been there before. I know, but when you told me, I kind of. You didn't say it a amount of time, but you. And you kind of gave it to me here yeah, like it was going to be a while. That was just a quick trip. Okay. Well, we, you know, we're happy to have you here. I'm just, I just didn't expect you here, that's all. Did you have a good time? All right. All right. All right. We're going to Matthew, the fifth chapter. I'm not going to go into all of this. I'll kind of skim some of it, but that's not my purpose of this study. I kind of probably spent more time in law than I anticipated I would, but, uh, that's what I have. Um, but I'm going to try and keep moving after today. Well, I don't think I'm going to get all that I got done today. I'm going to slow down on the first two sections and not even really on the law part. I'm going to explain what the law portion is, what the goal of it is. This is probably some important things I need to convey to you all to understand because I think there's probably a lot of misunderstanding on how to apply this portion of scripture. I gotta wait till those other guys come back. Mm. Um, and that's the purpose of coming to Bible study. Uh, sit under a teacher so we can get the right understanding and if you have the right understanding you want the understanding in their day so we know how to rightly apply it in our day <laughs> i'll just say off of the top that the sermon on the mount is the ideal Exemplification of kingdom life is ideally how kingdom life is to be exemplified or walked out in the life of the believer. Let me say it again. In the Sermon on the Mount is the ideal for how kingdom life should be exhibited in the life of the believer. Christ is not necessarily giving, he's not giving new laws at all, actually. When, but he is, he is putting forth his authority when he makes the statement, but I say unto you. Mm -hmm. And then he expands on the law, I like to say the spirit of the law, It lets us know, he lets us know that, or he was letting them know that your understanding of the law was only a starting point. Okay? He was letting them know in the first century, Palestine, he was letting them know, the Jews, that you're the scribes and Pharisees, keepers of this law, he's letting the teachers, he's letting them know that your understanding of the law is but a starting point. And Jesus gets to the root of the matter. But he is not making new laws. And some things, sometimes he uses hyperbole. And like I said, sometimes he's saying, ideally, this is what should be. This is what kingdom life looks like. This is how I want you to walk. Mm -hmm. Now, it's important that you get what I'm saying right now because of some of the questions that come out of what's in here. If you apply what I just said, it'll help you. Mm -hmm. When you start asking about it, the big one is the, the section on divorce. Okay. The bottom line is this. God hates divorce. God hates divorce. <laughs> That's the bottom, and you find that in Malachi. 
216, somewhere in Malachi. Um, however, God knew very well that you knuckleheads would do it anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, now, when I say you knuckleheads, I'm reaching back because it was in the Old Testament where you see and during the time of Moses where they got the provision for divorce. All right, so when I say you knuckleheads, I'm reaching back to say that God understood. And there's some things we don't understand about the customs and what was going on in the day, how those things could be applied. Um, with just opening the Bible, you won't get it. You have to research to understand. You know, uh, to some of them, it depend on what school or teaching they was under. They didn't believe, first of all, that. Um, for the most part, adulterer was speaking to women. <clears throat> a man could become an adulterer if he slept with a woman who was not that because he was married, but that the woman was married who he was sleeping with. Then it was adultery. So there are some things when you read it, you need to understand that. That Jesus knows what their understanding was when he was speaking to them. Okay? All right. So let me back off of that one. I'm just going to stay with, don't have so many questions about it. Now, if you've done it, you've done it. You ain't reaching back now unless neither one of you have gotten married. I've told many people like that. I said, man, go back and get your wife. <laughs> okay, but then, otherwise, you're going to move on. All right? Okay. Um, Matthew chapter 5. So, when you come to, um, you have various sections in here, and he starts off uh, in 3 through 12 with the Beatitudes. I call it the keys to happiness. Because the word blessed here means happy. Okay? So it doesn't make me a genius for calling them the keys to happiness because it's just a translation of the word blessed. It is our word happy. So he starts off with the Beatitudes and then the second discourses uh, verses 13 through 16 on salt and light. He tells you how to be happy. Then he tells you what is to be expected of you? What you should look like as kingdom children? Yeah. Then he begins to go into some of the laws to tell you how that's going to look mm -hmm. in the rest of chapter 5. Mm -hmm. I just divided it up into three simple sections. He starts off 3 through 12, telling you the keys to happiness, 13 through 16, what you should look like. And then 17 through 48, how that's played out in your life, in looking at the law, how it's to be practiced in your life. Okay? You all see that? You all got that? You got that, Robert? All right. Quiz at the end of class. Okay. Um, let's look at the Beatitudes real quick. <coughs> it's a sin to read that word, bless. <laughs> when you read the Beatitudes, if you say, um, Blessed are the poor in spirit. You're sinning. <laughs> it is blessed when reading the Beatitudes. That is. You look at me with a serious face. <laughs> blessed. You have to read the Beatitudes saying, Blessed. 
Otherwise, you are going before the Sanhedrin. <laughs> Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let me read some something I got here. These people recognize the fact that they have no spiritual assets. The poor in spirit. I got nothing to offer spiritually. They confess. They own up to their lost condition and rely on divine grace. When you, in other words, if you think you something, that's not talking about you. It says, blessed are the poor spirit to understand that outside of Christ, I am spiritually dead. I'm only born again through faith in Jesus Christ. And now spiritually and thus spiritually alive. Mm -hmm. Ephesians, the second chapter, lets us know that. You were dead in your sins and trespasses. And if you're dead spiritually, you have no real communication with God. Okay. If you start to do a bit of evangelism, you will hear people say, who after talking to them for a little bit, you begin to realize they seem to have no clue about who God really is, according to the word, this word, but they will go on to tell you, I pray every day, I pray all the time. Mm -hmm. If you do not have access to God the Father through faith in Jesus Christ, so what? You pray all the time. Right. If you're not praying, Lord, save me, you ain't praying yet. Save me according to the way you said I could be saved. Through faith in Jesus Christ. Period. <laughs> so the poor so blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom you see it you have to humble yourself to acknowledge that I don't have anything I need the grace of God to save me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. The sorrows that we go through is sometimes a key to who as to who we are. But it says they will be comforted. The reason you go through, I want to strike what I just said a moment ago about that. You going through sorrows, mm -hmm. mourning, it says blessed. Why are you blessed? Because you are guaranteed to be comforted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, okay. who comforts us. Who's us? His children. His Stop whispering. Who's us? His people. His people. Okay. All right. Somebody say people. Pardon me? The same people. Yes. <laughs> who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. You saw it at work Saturday. Amen. Amen. I stood up it was my father lying there, but I stood up to comfort others with the comfort that I've been comforted with. Yeah. That's what the passage says, right? Yeah. 
My mother would tell you that people over the last month, because her sister passed and now her husband, that people called her supposedly to console her, and she ended up consoling them. <laughs> comforting them with the comfort with, with, where she has been comforted. Mm -hmm. By God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Blessed are they yeah. that mourn. Now let me add what it's saying. Blessed are they that mourn that have God as their father. Mm -hmm. Because he is the God of all comfort. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes. Mm -hmm. He blessed. You mourn it, but you got God to comfort you. Mm -hmm. And so, Okay, let me go on. Blessed are the meek or the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Well, aren't we in a time of <clears throat> meek, meekness speaks to a controlled strength? Mm -hmm. A controlled strength. Strength under control has been harnessed. Yeah. Um, Moses didn't say, I'm walking with God. They acting up, they complaining. Strike them dead, Lord. No, but Moses <laughs> instead interceded on their behalf. He was meek. Yeah. He didn't go around. I'm Moses. What you say? <laughs> <laughs> you know I talk to God face to face like friends? <laughs> he didn't do that. He was meek. His brother and sister started to get fly with him. You can see Moses was just like, oh no. Yeah, fly. Knuckleheads. Yeah. God hears you talking to me like that. Yeah. Get out the way, Moses. God said, get out the way, Moses. I got this. No, right. Moses said, like, I can tell y'all. <laughs> 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 God said, didn't you know? Didn't you know who this guy is to me? You got a nerve to step to him? Mary said, oh! Hand was white with leprosy. And what happened? Moses got the intercede. Mm -hmm. On her behalf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he is meek. Jesus said that he is meek and lowly in her. Mm -hmm. God wants us to take on that attitude mm -hmm. and begin to inherit the earth, begin to see God in so many things. Mm -hmm. In so many things. Okay. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied with feel. Mm -hmm. We should have a deep and earnest desire for righteousness. It gives evidence that we are born again. Okay. Those who seek after right, after righteousness are satisfied. Amen. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Blessed are the merciful. Mm -hmm. We're talking about keys to happiness, aren't we? Mm -hmm. All right. Hold on, let me back up to the meat part again. <laughs> because we are in a society that says, go for it. Push. Kick them out the way. Step on your mother's head climbing that corporate ladder. She shouldn't have been in the way. That's the kind of society we are in. Amen. Walk all over you. Lie. I saw on TV last night where a guy <coughs> he said one thing 
Then a week later, he said, the, another thing. Then a couple weeks later, he said, back to that thing. Then another time, he's over here again. I'm like, don't they know they have all this on film? Right. <laughs> no surprise, this was a politician. <laughs> I'm just sitting there going, these folks are just evil. Mm -hmm. They don't care what's right. They just care about what. Take the temperature. Which way is the wind blowing that I need to go today? <laughs> so the next election come around, mm -hmm. I can keep my seat. Come on now. Yep. <laughs> These people are like that anyway, are evil. Mm -hmm. And they don't care who they hurt. They don't care what lies they tell. Mm -hmm. They're not meek. Mm -hmm. Come on. They're not hungry and thirsting after righteousness, mm -hmm. but they're hungry and thirsting after greed. Mm -hmm. Come on now. And power. They've sold themselves to the devil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hey, that is what the devil's selling, isn't it? Go back and look at the temptation of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what the devil was pushing. And they're sitting up there, I'll take some of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't be that way. Be meek. Mm -hmm. Be poor in spirit. Mm -hmm. Thirst after hunger and thirst after righteousness. The merciful, though. Okay. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Mm -hmm. If you're just going to be hard on people, guess what the guy is saying? He's going to be hard on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're just going to be hard, you're not going to have no give, no forgive. If you want mercy, I usually use the word grace. I said the same grace mm -hmm. that you want shown to you when you mess up, mm -hmm. of course, we'll stay with mercy. You're going to mess up. Mm -hmm. You're going to mess up. Every one of you in here, mm -hmm. you're going to mess up. Now, you like. You know, you want to be shown mercy. Amen. So when someone messes up where you're concerned, mm -hmm. show them mercy. Mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. But if you just gonna pounce on them, they were wrong, they were wrong, I was right, I was right, I was right. <laughs> okay. Let's do it again when you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. What we want extended to us, we need to extend to each other. That's the golden rule. Go over to chapter seven, you'll find it. So man didn't make it up, unless you call him that man Jesus. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's what it's saying here. This is an application of the golden rule. What else is going to make us happy? It's going to make you happy when you extend mercy. Amen. Amen. It's going to make you happy. Amen. You're going to feel good about it. I gave them a break. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see God. Purity. Purity. Singleness of purpose. The pure in heart are those who put God's glory above all else. Okay. To such he reveals himself. Okay. They should see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, I say it all the time. 
But I want, I love peace. I love peace. I hate confusion. I hate contention. I love peace. I don't want to be, he's deceased now, Rodney, what's the name in LA? Rodney King. I'm, I'm, I'm with Rodney King. Can we all? You know why we can't? Because we, we don't. Sometimes we don't want to extend mercy, and we want to fight for our rights. But that's not Jesus's way. That's the way the world's way. That's not Jesus's way. And here's the thing: we don't trust God enough to say when we feel we're wrong. Lord, you just hand the keys. I know that's right. Teach us. Mm -hmm. We think we got to handle it. And guess what we're going to do? Mm -hmm. Muck it up. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. <laughs> if we trusted God enough, say, Lord, could you handle this, please? <laughs> you know what happened. <laughs> now, and, and you know one good thing, reason for doing it that way? Because sometimes you're not always as right as you think. That's true. I can never say that. Mm -hmm. So you will save yourself the embarrassment by saying, Jesus, you had it because you might have been pretty wrong in this situation. But at least you didn't go stomping your feet by how right you were because you just turned it over to the Lord. <laughs> so there's an advantage to just doing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. How the house is going to be happy. But peacemakers, listen. If two people are in odds, do what you can to get them together. Not to the Bible. Well, well let me tell you what she's saying. <laughs> oh, let me tell you. Well, you just don't know. <laughs> you got to be a peacemaker. <laughs> and listen, we don't think about what we're doing that when one of the scripture tells us. God hears every idle word. Every 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 word. Christ was persecuted. Mm -hmm. Amen. So you can expect it too when you start to walk like him. But understand that you'll be in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. You're in the kingdom when you accept him, but I'm talking about being in that millennial kingdom reign. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> God left us here and exposed us to a hostile situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you're here following after Christ, expect some hostility when you're following after Christ. Don't, don't tell me about the hostility when you was acting up. <laughs> that was just you getting what you had coming. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you rob a guy, you need to go to jail, period. Don't be talking about you being persecuted. <laughs> and don't go talk about how good how good a boy Johnny was. Johnny shouldn't have been doing what he was doing. <laughs> they shouldn't have shot him. Well, I don't know about that. I might have shot him too. <laughs> Okay. 
Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Don't leave that off. Amen. Don't leave that off. Don't listen. I know ten gazillion Christians have used this without including because of me. <laughs> they might be talking about you because they were telling the truth. He's talking about when they talking about you because of him. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So then 12, he says, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. In the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So it's just saying, hey, this is what happened to people who really follow after Christ. Okay. Okay? People are going to start talking all kind of smack. Come on now. Okay? And it'll definitely happen. Okay? You might not always hear it. Sometimes you will. But here's the thing. Try not to defend yourself so bad, so hard. Okay? All right. The next discourse is on salt and light. So we told you how to be happy. Here's the things you should do. Think radical behaviors. Why am I saying radical behaviors? Because they're not the norm in our society. Okay. So it's radical behaviors. Okay? Poor in spirit. <clears throat> you're like, I ain't got nothing to offer. You, you, you're humbly acknowledging. I need Christ, okay? Mm-hmm. Mourning. Uh, well, you're saying that God is going to comfort you. Being gentle or meek. Mm-hmm. Uh, hunger and thirsting after righteousness. Don't do that. Don't, no. Let's go over here. And do, no, I'm not going. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. That's going to make you happy, okay? Mm-hmm. All right? We good? Okay. So now, in 13 through 16, this was the, this is what, if you're a kingdom child, this is what should be true about you. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Don't let your don't let your light shine. So you can be seen. That's how do I differentiate okay. how I want to say that? Don't do things just to be seen. But let that righteousness shine. So let's look at it. Salt and light. So salt. So uh, I guess the salt back in this time, there was something about it where the, the something could leach out of it and then not become salty anymore, right? You probably have a different salt now. Um, I think that's what I was reading before. I can't remember that well, but I know it was something about the salt with the term of it. It was the saltiness would leach out of it for a reason. Um, but anyway, what is salt? What does salt? Do I have it in my notes? I might. Let's see. All right, so what is salt for? Huh? Flavor? What else? Preserving. Preservative. Made it slow to decay. Oh, I do have. I forgot I have my old notes here. In the ancient world, salt used salt used had salt that was used had many impurities that would allow sodium chloride to be leached out and lose the saltiness. I guess the sodium chloride is the salty part of it. As followers of Christ, we want to have salty lives. Mm-hmm. Now, what do y'all say is salty for? I'm not going to go away from flavor either, though. Let's use flavor. Mm-hmm. And what was the other one? Preserving. Preserving. So. Things that have a long shelf life, you know what you can find written on that can, don't you? Mm-hmm. 
What? Exploration day. God. <laughs> MSG. <laughs> MSG. <laughs> Salt. Come on, what are you going to find on that game? Salt. Sodium. You're not telling me enough. Mm -hmm. No, you were right. You didn't tell me enough. Long shelf life, what are you going to see? High in salt. High in sodium. Thank oh, you. Okay. Okay. Right? Okay. It's going to last. But all that salt in there helps it, helps preserve it. <laughs> Why is that important? The Christian, listen, remember Lot, no, Abraham, bargaining, bartering with God about the destruction of, of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham said, You wouldn't destroy the righteous with the wicked, would you? Okay. God said, No, I will not preserve it. See that? Yeah. Preserve it. I find 50 righteous. Can you not do it? Won't do it. Um, how about 40? <laughs> Thirty. You see what was happening? <laughs> he got down to ten, didn't he? Yeah. God said, "I won't do it." <laughs> Couldn't find God. The the righteous are the unrighteous are saved by the righteous. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the, be the salt. Flavor. You know, you all come into church, and I don't be saying, "What is wrong with these people?" <laughs> You just observe. Not everybody, some people are new. But people have been coming in for a while and they walk in that walk. Guess what? They look like it. Mm -hmm. Flavor. They look good. I want some of that flavor. What flavor is that? Oh, this is the Jesus flavor. <laughs> you look like. See, God is going to take care of you. Because you're his children, and he makes you look like you've been look like you've been taken care of. I have seen it for sure. Well, I saw it in my own mirror. Where God, well, when you start following after God, he takes years off your life. Mm -hmm. Or the appearance of it anyway. Mm -hmm. Shoot. I probably with 30 years ago, I probably was looking looking at the age I am now. <laughs> God took it off and renewed my youth. Okay? You know, skinny and frail and jacked up. Okay? I've seen it. I'm not going to, I've seen it on others. Somebody might be in the room, I just won't say. I'm just kidding. I, don't, I can't think of anybody in the room, but. <laughs> so. Salt and then light. You shouldn't go around with a trumpet. I'm going to announce that I'm a Christian. You should not be blowing a trumpet that you are a Christian. We were at. Um, uh, somebody got baptized here. Was that the baptism? And somebody came from another church. And Jasmine said, 
Um, oh, I used to work with her. She said, I always knew a little something about her. Yeah. Okay? That's the way it should be. I'm going to specifically say, on your job. I'm going to specifically say, on your job. You know why I say on your job? Because Christ not the folks don't work with you. Right. <laughs> okay? So, you got to feel like I just get away with being who I want to be. On your job, your co-workers ought to say there's something about that person. Mm -hmm. Because on your job, you're going to be tried. <laughs> right? You're going to be tried on your job. The job is going to tell them whether or not you are a Christian. Hmm. Now, when something happened, and you, you the person that's cussing folk out <laughs> and getting all the pats on the back from your, from your hood co-workers, <laughs> I ain't taking that. They, they got, you, you got the right one. <laughs> you know, we can, we can use the opposite terms to me, the exact same thing. You got the wrong one, you got the right one, and it means the same thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it means the exact same thing. You got the right one. You got the you don't mess with the wrong one today. <laughs> if you that person, don't nobody I don't care how big that Bible is on your desk, don't nobody believe you Christian. There's no light shining. We are to be our light is to shine. Okay? Let me go back to Saturday again. 1 Corinthians 4 says that we don't mourn as those that have no hope. We have hope. So guess what? There may have been some tears Saturday. But wasn't nobody laying in the floor well and climbing in the casket? Oh, take me with you! <laughs> wasn't none of that going on? Amen. I've been to some funerals and seen. Oh, yeah, I know one. Oh, you and I are both were at. Yeah. Oh! oh, good Lord. <laughs> I'm just sitting in the back. Good Lord. Oh, woo, Lord. Somebody should be preaching Jesus while they were living. What in the world? <laughs> we don't mourn as those that have no hope. Amen. And I guess they ought to be wailing like that if they know this person was going to hell or that person mm -hmm. who's wailing. They don't know Christ, so that's who all they, they that was the end. <laughs> For us, see you later. Yeah. I'm going to miss you, tears. Mm -hmm. Tears, I'm going to miss you. Mm -hmm. But then the smile, I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. See, not like those that have no hope. We have a hope in Christ. Yeah. And I'll see you again. Mm -hmm. And so, believers ought to maintain their Christian virtues in order to slow back to the salt. Maintain their Christian virtues, exhibit their Christian virtues, behavior, in order to slow the moral decay. Mm -hmm. In order to slow the moral decay in a corrupt society. Okay? Say the first part again. Christian ought to. Maintain their Christian virtues, or believers ought to make so I'll use Christians. Why believers should maintain their Christian virtues? You got to do that when you write papers, right? Use different words to say the same okay. virtues in order to slow moral decay in a corrupt society. And help preserve souls that are committed to Christ. 
there's some souls that still got to come to Christ that you got to part in if you're salty. Amen. Mm-hmm. They haven't come yet, but they've already been chosen. Y'all follow me? Mm-hmm. They haven't come yet. But if you ain't salty, God, like, I can't use you to bring them home. Mm-hmm. Y'all follow me? Mm-hmm. Then we should do good works that are seen by all to provide light and to be a kingdom witness in a sin darkened world. Men love what? Darkness. 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 <clears throat> You know, except for the rare occasion, but it's not the norm, the club don't keep off at 5 or 6 o'clock in the evening. No, it doesn't. <laughs> and it ain't even going good if it's a good one at 10 o'clock. No. It's dead. Yeah, my time to arrive was 11.30. Yeah, it's on the Twelve. Darkness. Some about darkness. That's <laughs> <laughs> facts. Not just the club. The club don't have to be a bad thing necessarily. It doesn't. But there's other stuff that we're waiting on darkness for. Thank you. Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God is what? Light. 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 First John. First John five through seven. God is light. Okay. Mm-hmm. Don't just think now the physical darkness. Understand that the person who was on the job, someone, for instance, someone came to me one time and said, you know, I worked in IT, so yeah, a lot of people know they had their hands on stuff that, you know, that they should have been, they needed some integrity with it. I, I took it into the HR file and see what, uh, you know, everybody made. <laughs> they said, this really happened. They said to me, you want to see it? Nope. <laughs> they said, you want to see it? I, look, it, when I said I did, nope, on the end of it, when you talk, I was still talking about that other person. That was my answer. No, nope, it was so quick. Mm-hmm. Nope. Not interested. <laughs> Listen, for one, I'm okay working here. Now I'm going to be ticked. Once you get that information, now you mad. And you, the knowledge can make you unhappy. Mm-hmm. No, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. But more so, if they get into trouble, look at that. Mm-hmm. <coughs> you know they're going to become a, 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 a tweet. Yeah. yeah. They're going to sing. Yeah. Hinton was, Hinton was, Hinton was <laughs> in it too. Yeah. Hinton was in it too. <laughs> no, nope, I ain't telling on them. I'm just going by my business. You go for it. Don't, I don't even want to know what you found out. You keep that. <laughs> Light. Well, why doesn't he want to? Okay. Light. When they pass over you for a position and you don't get mad and stomp and shout, you say, Lord, you got it. Light. Mm-hmm. People say, why aren't they mad? Everybody know you should have been next to life. And people won't come to you and say, girl, man, you know that should have been you. <laughs> and you got to say, I'm all right with a smile. I know that's right. Mm-hmm. You got to say, I'm all right. Light. My mom got laid off at um, American Greetings. It was a big deal. What year was that? <laughs> Big layoff from American Green. She'd been there 24 years. I'm sitting at home looking at the news. Mm-hmm. There's my mom on TV. 
They done got the camera and <laughs> stuck the mic in the car. <laughs> <laughs> they all driving all angry and stuff. They got to my mother. She said, well, it's just like life. It's uncertain. Something to that effect. <laughs> just, well, it's like, like life. It's uncertain. I'm like, yes. <laughs> it was her reaction was different from the others. Mm. Light. Mm. And people, what does that do? How come mm. she ain't all be out of shape? Mm. That's what it will do. Mm. Flavor. Mm. I want some of that. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. This is what Jesus is saying. Kingdom children ought to look like. Yeah. This is what he's saying. And then he, then he goes on into the laws and expanding upon them. Not, not changing, not adding. The same. Exhibiting his, putting forth his, forth his authority and saying, you've heard, it been, you've heard it been said, but I say unto you. Okay? And what Jesus starts to do is get into that attitude behind the infraction. Okay. The murder. What's, he's going to talk about murder, but then he starts talking about anger. Why? Because what preceded the actual murder? Mm -hmm. Anger. Uncontrolled anger. Mm -hmm. Rage. So that's what Jesus begins to deal with. Mm -hmm. The attitude before and The lust. Mm -hmm. What is he dealing with? Okay? Or, or the um, adultery, rather. Mm -hmm. What he says, I but I say unto you, if you look on her and desire, because he's saying, you didn't just yeah, yeah. arrive in her bed or his bed, there was something that took place beforehand, and he said, nip that in the book, cut it off before this thing gets started. Don't keep every time I hear she walk by. <laughs> 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 Running out your way. How you doing today? <laughs> oh, anyway, what do you know? No way. You go this way. That's what she said. <laughs> that wasn't the most direct way to your death. <laughs> That's what he said. It starts to address. He said, that came first. If you cut that off, that's what he said. Cut it off. Pluck it out. You all read it. That's what he's talking about. <laughs> Jesus said, get out ahead of these things. And understand that certain behaviors can lead to something worse. That's true. And you are kingdom children. He's trying to save us from embarrassing the kingdom. And I'm so I just heard something. I forgot it already. I just, I'm so tired of hearing about preachers. <coughs> Pastors even, actually. Okay. Not just them, because they're not talking about associate ministers. Mm -hmm. They only don't talk about pastors or someone who got some position. And I'm like, I always get offended for now you got big folks looking at me cross-eyed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's bad for the whole body. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, I ain't, I got one bed I sleep in. There's a hotel bed and she didn't want me there too. <laughs> But it's only one woman to get in that bed with. No, that's fine. I ain't look. I I, I ain't even believe in sticking with my kids when they were babies. Yeah. No, that's right. They just let uh, let, let them lose in my retirement and lay on my chest. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff about the, these guys going after young girls mm -hmm. under age. Oh, 
getting set up with them, involved in trafficking and all this stuff. Bastards! <laughs> Shameful. Do you give a woman, a grown woman, fool around? It wouldn't be this bad. It was bad, but it wouldn't be that bad. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to prison. Your wife just would have jacked you otherwise. Now you got to go to prison. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? This is such an embarrassment to the body. Mm -hmm. he want, he's saying, cut that stuff off. These guys didn't arrive there. Like that. Mm -hmm. There were some patterns taking place that they didn't cut off. And that's what Jesus starts to address in the following verses mm -hmm. in the rest of chapter 5. Okay. So when you see that about it, plucking out the eye, cutting off the hand, this is what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. He's using hyperbole to say, cut that. Listen, you know. Mm -hmm. You see it, you know that that's something you attract to. You better make sure you keep her professional. Make sure you call her sister. Mm -hmm. And don't be with her all one on one. Okay? All right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Everything I say goes for both. Yeah. 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 I said it last week. Yeah. That, that gap, yeah. I said, men, yeah. men being dogs, I said, man, they closed the gap on us. Um, yeah. Women yeah. barbering too. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go. Let's go home. We come back. Um, come back on um, Sunday. Thursday. Come back. Who have a question? Who have a question? What you got, Bishop? You got a question? Okay. All right. Y'all know Brother Bishop there? All right. You got another Brother Bishop. Let me have one of his friends. Somebody told me, I won't say no name. Somebody said, I don't be, I don't be looking around to see who's there. I said, well, you should. I can't believe we, and some people, Say things about I just go to church, get in, and get out. And they say, I'm like, you like you're bragging about it. I'm like, that's not good. <laughs> Wait, what? When Jesus said, What are the ways that he knows us that are love? It's by our love for each other. Doesn't the scripture say that? Uh -huh. We know by our love for each other? Well, to say you get in, I, I, I'm going to get my get my sports up in, I'm, I'm out the door. I ain't thinking about that. Uh -huh. Really? <laughs> That's how you treat your family? We are brothers and sisters, aren't we? Yeah. I couldn't tell. I'm not talking about y'all. I'm really not. Some of us here, you got to kick them out, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really? People here, you got to, like, kind of flick the lights <laughs> on them. <laughs> I ain't talking about nobody. Bob. I'm just saying what I'm saying. Bob. Amen. Okay, dude. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to be done with the law, I think, tonight. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I just wanted, I kind of gave an overview of that other part. I kind of ran over time, but you had the sections on adultery, murder, murder, that was adultery, divorce, holds, retaliation. I should have talked about that. And love for enemies. Oh, I should talk about those two for sure. Maybe I'll start off that next week, but I'm going to move on to the next section of uh, knowing your Bible. All right? Okay. Let's, uh, we're not going to do the verse. Let's pray because you all may go past time. Lucky. Just the bank may go past time. So. She always tells me, I'm sorry. Father, we thank you for this time together in the world. I thank you again for your people coming out to study. I thank you for all the uh, Young people, mm -hmm. uh, Lord, I pray that the flame that has been lit inside of them would not grow dim. Yeah. Yeah. That the fire that the fire would keep burning, and they would be that you would use them to do great things for your Lord. Yeah. Father, uh, but not only them, all who are coming, we just thank you. Thank you, Father. Uh, Lord, watch over us now as we go out from this place and see us to our 
So the destination section for the Jesus name we pray. That lag though. Huh? Huh? Oh, there it is. I thought this was supposed to be on a Saturday. I can't. I can't do that on Saturday. I have devotion at church on Monday. Um, I'm going to be late too. 